Welcome, welcome, welcome to the people that are here. As you know, I'm always excited to be going live with you and sharing what it is like to live with herpes. Yay. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that is usually not known or people that are, that we just don't realize how common herpes really is, is one out of six people have HSV-2 and two out of three have HSV-1. So that's a lot of people living with HSV. By the time we're 50, 90% of the people that are 50 and older have some form of HSV, whether it's HSV-1 or HSV-2. So we think that like herpes is such a foreign thing. We think that it's not common. We think that like, yeah, there's no way we're going to pick it up. There's no way we're going to get it. No, yada, yada, yada. Yet it's something that's so common. And one of the things that's extremely frustrating is people with oral herpes specifically usually are less likely to get diagnosed because they just go like, oh yeah, I have that. Or yeah, yeah, I get that when I'm sick. Or like, oh, my mom had that. And so I have that. It's hereditary, which is not, it's not hereditary. It's something that has to be passed skin to skin. And so a lot of times people will never be diagnosed. And they just assume it's something when they get when they're sick or they're under stress or whatever, or weather change. And so they don't realize this can be an STD. They don't realize this can be sexually transmitted. And so therefore HSV-1 is getting transmitted so much more frequently than it was prior. So this is something to really be aware of and it's frustrating that people are are like, ew, well I would never date anyone with the one down there, but yeah, I have one up here, it's fine. No, it's the same thing, right? And so, and so it's getting transmitted because we do things with our mouth down there to our partners and that's how it gets transmitted. Okay, my friends, what is going on? If you are new to life with herpes, if you're new to this, you know, well, if you're new, welcome. My name's Alexandra, welcome. If you are not new, you know that we get hundreds of questions and I go through them in the order in which they are received. I do my best to answer all of them. If you can do your best to keep your questions rated G because when they're PG or even or R, that's not allowed but the app definitely blocks them. So I wanna do the best to get, make sure, um, I wanna do the best to make sure that you keep your questions rated G so that I can actually see them. You can get your questions answered and we don't get in trouble with the platform. Cool. Also, if you know someone that has herpes, if you know someone that is dealing with an STD, you know someone that needs to hear this information, please share it. Like I said, I have been doing this since 2017. I launched, Life with herpes in 2017. I've been diagnosed with HSV-1 since 2003 and HSV-2 since 2011. So I've had it for a number, number, number of years. We're into decades that I've had it. And as far as living with herpes and talking about it publicly, I've been doing it since 2017. So a rather long time. So again, pull back and look at some of the questions here. Okay. Hello, I had a rash down there, always struggled with eczema, um, but while having itch down there, I also have an infection on my finger, Whitlow, I'm kind of scared right now. Okay, so you have herpetic Whitlow, so, uh, so for people like, what is Whitlow? So HSV, herpes, can be oral, ocular, on your hands, which is Whitlow, I don't know why it's called that, and I guess Whitlow, whatever, and then genital. Actually, it can be really anywhere on your body, but these are the primary locations, the most common being oral and genital. So, yeah, so if you can, so, and people like Whitlow, fingers, how does that happen? A lot of dentists used to actually have it because they didn't use gloves. And so a lot of, it was really prominent for dentists to have it. Think about, you know, in people's mouth. Um, and then, yeah, we, we cut our cuticles, we bite our fingers, whatever. And so you can get it on your fingers. So is it possible to transmit it to another location is basically what you're saying, especially down there. Is it possible? It is possible. It's not very likely because most likely you have the antibodies. Typically, if you have the antibodies, you're less likely to retransmit it to another part in your body. However, I don't test that out. I don't try it out. I'm not like, ooh, let me see. Let me see if I can put it in my eye. No, I don't try that out, right? I definitely wash my hands after I touch my outbreak accidentally or whether it's accidental or on purpose. 
So I would say the only thing that you can do right now is just sit and wait. And I know that's not fun. And I, that's like frustrating. So I'm sorry you have to sit and wait. Um, but let's just sit and wait and see what happens. Um, as far as Whitlow, do you know you have HSV? Because it might just be something else that's happening on your, on your finger or on your hand. Hi guys, welcome. I'm Matt. My name's Alexandra. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I've been living with herpes since 2003 with HSV1 and 2011 with HSV2 down there. Anyways, I've been speaking publicly about my life with herpes, aka life with herpes since 2017. And really what propelled me to do this is in 2011 when I was diagnosed with herpes down there, I was so scared isolated. I was, I'm going to tap the screen just because I want to thank you guys for joining. Um, scared, isolated, terrified that my life was now over. I was terrified that I now was no longer going to be able to live the life that I always wanted. I felt that I was stripped of that privilege. I felt that I was stripped of my liberties. I felt that I was stripped of who I was. Like I now had to go through life with this like veil over me that was that was negative Nelly. Like, like I was dying on the vine. And so that is why, and I know that's how we all feel. I felt that I was unlovable. I felt that I had to sacrifice who I was. Like I wouldn't be able to marry who I wanted. I wouldn't be able to be a mommy. These are all the fears that I had. And this is absolutely BS. This is what the stigma tells us. And with saying that, I am guilty of the stigma. We all collectively are guilty of the stigma, right? The stigma is, oh, it's shame, um, unlovable, dirty, promiscuous, all sorts of things that are not accurate. But we've all fed into them at one point or another. We've all made the joke or all had the assumption or all laughed at something or like, oh, well, yeah, I know who has herpes. She does. Ew, of course she does. I know why, right? So we've all done that. So I, I take my responsibility in feeding the stigma and now I am the stigma, right? Now I have it. That's why, you know, I'm sure we all felt that way. What we have to do, the number one thing, well, there's two really important things that we have to do in order to get out of this, in order to break free, in order to shed the stigma, in order to get out of the way, in order to like peel ourselves off is number one, practice forgiveness, okay? I want you to forgive your partner that gave you herpes. I want you to forgive that person. Whether that person knew or didn't know, we need to forgive that person, okay? If that person didn't know, then the person didn't know, like, didn't know, right? If the person did know, that person was going through his own shit, his, her, his or her own shit. And that person was a, like a hostage in his or her own world. So forgive that person, right? They were going through their own shit. Then you need to forgive yourself, right? Forgive yourself for, because we like to say, oh, well, I should have never gone on that date or I should have never, I could have, should have, would have, should have asked for the STZ results, should have gotten tested, should have, could have, would have. Forgive yourself. You made a decision at that point in time that you thought was the best decision. You made a decision based on what you knew was the best thing to do. Just like we have to forgive our partners. You need to forgive yourself. At that point in time, that date that herpes was transmitted to you, you were making a decision that you thought was it was the best that you could do, whether it was based on, based on the knowledge that you knew, based on trust, based on you were in a relationship where you trusted somebody, maybe you were dealing with substance abuse, I don't know. But you made a decision based on maybe you were intoxicated and you're like, this sounds like a great idea, Whatever it is, you made a decision based on that. So that's it. Then next, you need to you need to take responsibility for your actions. So we're gonna we're gonna forgive ourselves for our actions, right? But now let's take responsibility for our actions. So let's take responsibility for maybe I'll like I'm guilty. I I, I had a bottle of champagne by myself, right? I was 28 years old, 27 years old, whatever it was. I am gonna take that responsibility. I lowered my decision-making skills because I had a bottle of champagne. I was like, this is a good idea right now, right? So we all can 
take responsibility for 50%, right? Our partner is also responsible for, for the other 50% of how this happens. The next thing from dealing with the shame is we have to look at whatever that stigma is for you, right? So is it, oh, I was promiscuous? Is it, oh, I'm dirty? Is it, oh, I'm unlovable? Is it, I don't know what it is for you, so whatever that stigma is, is like, oh, well, I know the type of person, like I can speak for myself, like I know the type of girl, what she would look like and act like that has herpes, and I don't look or act like that, so why do I have it? So it's like a, it's a conundrum in your brain. It's like, wait, this is who's supposed to have it, and now, I have it, so do I act and look like this? And I don't, so now I'm confused, right? So you have to begin to write out these these stigma ideas, these stigma beliefs that are rooted really deeply in you that you go, whoa, huh, do I need to reevaluate that? Do I need to rethink this? And you can start to rethink it. You can start to reevaluate it. You can start to say, oh, interesting, interesting. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm not the stigma because I am this and this is this and there's proof out there. So if you can start to find proof of, hey, what? but you know what? I actually am not dirty. I'm not promiscuous or I whatever it is. Hmm. There's other people out there that are just like me that have herpes and they're not promiscuous. So it doesn't mean that I am. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You can start to find proof in other situations that you're like, that doesn't, that doesn't exist. So therefore it's not true and doesn't have to be true for me. So I can start to break down that belief. Does this all make sense? You guys, can I get some hearts if this makes sense? If you guys are like, this is really, I understand what you're talking about, Alexander. Like, I'm, I'm not getting any hearts. Maybe this doesn't make sense. I got some hearts. Okay, cool. It's <laughs> like, wait, I'm really trying to, my goal here is not, I mean, I, I am all about like herpes 101. Let's talk about it. What is HSV? And I have 52 questions I have to get through right now. So I will get through them. But the idea is once you learn what herpes is, how do we get away from it? How do we get away from it being Eeyore and having the rain cloud over you and so that you are you are trapped and stuck and feeling like you can't get out of this? How do you transform? How do you create the life that you want to have with herpes? And that may sound silly to you right now because I know it would have to me in 2011 because I was stuck in it. I look back at pictures of myself and I like didn't have the color. I didn't have color. I didn't, I was gray. I was sad. I was, you could look at, there was no twinkle in my eye. Now I have twinkles in my eye and that's not, I don't have a light on me or anything. Like I have twinkles in my eye, right? I am shining through and through because I'm living the life that I deserve and the life that I created and the life that I transformed. I'm a mommy with herpes. I've breastfed with herpes. I am married love of my life with herpes. I've created the life I want with herpes and that's what I want for you. A lot of times herpes is the like nail in the coffin to confirm to you that like, yeah, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve my dream job. I don't deserve my certain type of income. I don't deserve uh, to marry the man or woman of my dreams. I don't deserve happiness. I don't deserve to be a mom, all these things. And it's like, it makes me so terribly sad when I see that because I've talked to thousands, thousands, and thousands of people, like personally, thousands, obviously millions through social media, but thousands personally. And it's just, it's tragic for me to hear when people just um, kind of wilt away. I think of what the images came to my mind, if you guys ever watched Little Mermaid, when she gives her voice to Ursula the witch, and she, the like, they like turn into that little, like that weird, like kelp thing. And that's literally what I feel like happens when we're diagnosed with herpes. And it's so sad and that doesn't need to happen. Okay. So what I, yes, it's, I'm talking about life with herpes, but I really am talking about transforming. That's what we want to do. We want to transform. Okay. I'll get off my soapbox and I'll start answering questions for you guys. So we can start talking. Um, Hi from Ecuador. Hey, what's up? Whoa, I just went to the, I hate when that happens. Hey from Ecuador. Let me find Ecuador. Um, I have a question. How can I handle the first year living with herpes? So I would, a lot of what I talked about, 
practice forgiveness, take responsibility, and detach yourself from the stigma, which is a lot of what I talked about. We talk a lot about this in our secret society, which is our private community, which is what I've created. And it is a community of people all over the world, and we, we meet eight times a month live, not in person, but on Zoom, and we talk about this. So I would, if you're firstly diagnosed with herpes, number one, I would download my free ebook that is a 21-page ebook that walks you through being diagnosed with herpes. It walks you through some natural remedies that you probably have at home that you can use. So it's Outbreak Remedies. It is, it is in the, it's linked for you in the bio. You can go to outbreakremedies.com to download that. Then secondly, I would join the Secret Society, which is the community where people from all over the world are. And I would say that's going to start your healing journey. So if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking more for supplements, if you're looking for ways like, hey, how do I treat it? I definitely have supplements linked right here, pinned. It's lysine. In fact, I'm kind of getting low on lysine myself. This is my non-negotiable. This is the, um, it's an essential amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the HSV virus. And so I take this daily. I don't mess around with it. It is pinned for you all right now to check it out. So that's number one of my non-negotiables. My next non-negotiable is monolaurin, which is lauric acid. And it is, um, it is something that helps dissolve the outer layer, like the enveloped, uh, HSV is an enveloped virus, which means it has an outer shell. Like think of this bottle as the shell and, and, and it helps um, dissolve that outer shell so our immune system can go in and penetrate it. So I have that linked for you. And then last but never least is andrographis, which is, which is a, a very strong immune support uh, extract, herbal extract, that I also take daily as a non-negotiable to help fight the HSV virus. So these are all pinned for you. They're all in the store. You can check them out. The company that they come from is formerly known as, Pal as Natural Cure Labs, now Palmera Health. It's the only company I trust because I have lots of people reaching out to me daily saying like, people saying, hey, will you do a promo for me? Will you support my vitamins? Will you do this? And my answer is no. It's very plain and simple. This company is the only company that I trust and it is the best possible product out there for living with herpes. So I don't mess around. I've talked to people that are like, hey, I've gone to Walgreens or CVS or whatever to pick up something else. They're on vacation or whatever. And people have said like, it doesn't, it's not the same. It doesn't. So anyways, this is all I trust for you. Can you transmit herpes if there is no outbreak? Yes, you can unfortunately. So transmission can occur without an outbreak when it's called viral shedding. So the virus is shedding, just like everything else shed, sheds, the virus sheds its DNA and then it pops up to the surface of the skin where you're contagious, not your entire body. So you're not like walking around. No, it's just where you are contagious. Like, so if you have oral herpes, it'd be on your mouth. Is the dosage in the bottles good for outbreaks, everyday use? So yeah, I would follow the recommended dosage on the lysine, monolaurin, angiographis. I'd follow that. I follow it as well. And for monolaurin, there is um, a dosage. If you go to monolaurinandmore.com, they will write. They'll spell out the dosage for you. It's a third-party website just talking about monolaurin. Um, it's not sponsored by any product. And it has to do like your height, your weight, male, female, what you're trying to do. Because what happens is when you're dying off, whether it's a bacteria or a virus, it's called the Herx something. I just call it Herx. It's when there's a die off, there's an adverse reaction. So um, there can be like flu-like symptoms. So you don't want to like, you don't want to do too much. Anyways, that's that. Okay, let me keep going, guys. I'm trying to get through my 58 or 66 should fish oil be avo avoided? Whether supplements should I avoid? So I, I'm not a doctor as far, so I do not know about that. I take fish oil daily. I take CoQ10, but um, that has nothing to do I, has with herpes. Um, I don't see why fish oil should be avoided. Um, in fact, fish is very high in lysine, so it's a natural way to help prevent the replication of the virus. I don't know if, if fish oil is high in lysine specifically, but I know fish is. I, I take fish oil. I'm not sure if it's Whitlow. Got it swabbed a few days back, waiting for the results. Not sure now. Okay, cool. HSC at all. Yeah, I, I understand, Nathan. Just, yeah, unfortunately, you just have to wait, which is unfortunate. 
If you are, what can you do to prevent getting it? If you are negative, what can you do to prevent getting it while being with someone? The best thing you can do to prevent getting herpes if you your partner has herpes and you do not, number one, talk to your partner and have that trust with your partner. Figure out, um, have your partner share like, hey, I feel something or I feel tingly or I have sort of some sensation. Like, Hopefully you and your partner can have that communication so that you can do your best to help prevent a potential like, oh, well, I didn't have an outbreak, but I had an itch, right? So number one. Number two, um, if your partner's on the antiviral, that according to the CDC is, or the FDA CDC, it is the best way to prevent transmission. It lowers transmission by 48%. So if your partner's on that, that's gonna be a really good way to prevent transmission. Third, you can use a condom if you want. That doesn't always prevent transmission, and the reason why is because the condom may not protect the area in which your partner has herpes. So, for example, if your partner has herpes on um, his or her, let's say, inner thigh, right? The condom's not going to protect the inner thigh. Inner thigh is still exposed. So that's that's that. The next thing that you can do your yourself would be to boost your immune system. Anything you can do to boost your immune system is gonna be the best thing. Right here, we have the immune support by the same company that I talked about. Um, this is gonna be great. You can also take Monolaurin that I've talked about that's all in the store here. And then even Angiographis is gonna be, that's not Angiographis. Angiographis is gonna be like the next thing that you can do to help boost your immune system, to help prevent you from picking it up. So it's all about your immune system is gonna basically be the best thing. Guys, thank you for the follows. I see lots of follows. Thank you for the shares. Thanks for spending your morning with me. I appreciate that. The other convos just trying to uh, is it bad to take antivirals and supplements at the same time? So once again, I'm not a doctor. However, um, supplements are meant to supplement your diet. If you do have questions, please ask your doctor. I personally have taken supplements and vitamins at this, er, supplements and the antiviral uh, congruently, jointly, together. Um, it's just another way to naturally help your body. It, they're, they're supplements, they're minerals, they're um, herbal extracts or things like that that can help. So there typically isn't any like drug interaction. Of course, if you have questions, ask your pharmacist, ask your doctor. I have taken lysine with the antiviral. I've taken monolaurin with the antiviral. So I have, I have definitely done that. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that cold sores cause both. I know, I know. There shouldn't be any shame, I know. Yay, you got the Secret Society chapstick? It's amazing, I know, it really is. Those of you guys are like, what are you talking about? This is the first product. So I, la so I launched Life with Herpes in 17, and then I launched the Secret Society in 2019. And it's a way to buy natural wellness products that are specifically formulated for HSV. When I looked at the things out there and you could buy, like you'd have to go to the drugstore and they'd be under lock and key and anyways, who wants to do that? So these are natural. The ingredients are all natural. They're from the USA. Um, made in the USA. Products from the USA. This has coconut oil, cocoa butter, beeswax, raspberry seed oil, lysine. Okay, we were talking about lysine. There's lysine in this. Anyways, this is specifically made for people with oral herpes. However, you don't have to have oral herpes to use it. Like it literally is the best chapstick out there. I use it daily. I cannot live without it. It's naturally SPF'd. I use it daily. Like it's my nonstop. I, like if I go to bed and I don't have it, I can't go to bed. You don't have to sleep around. Married people don't know a cold sore causes both types. No shame. Absolutely. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, there's an idea that there's just the concept that, oh, you have herpes, you're promiscuous. That's the bottom line, or you're dirty, or you're irresponsible. And 
it doesn't mean like you can get you can be married and you can be a virgin and have herpes so there's that um it's all about communication absolutely you just came out to your fiance five years he didn't leave me but he did say i if I knew when we started dating, he wouldn't have dated you. Oof, I'm sorry to hear that. I bet that was a really hard conversation. I'm very, very proud of you. I know that other people are very proud of you for having that conversation. One of the things I do talk about in some of my videos is how do you come forward? How do you have this disclosure conversation post being intimate? So. I would recommend just being as humble as possible, being as sincere as possible, knowing that you're dealing with turmoil and the person that you're gonna tell the message to is going to deal with turmoil and both people's emotions need to get met. So it's apologizing for your situation and letting the person know that, hey, I was stuck, I didn't know how to handle this. I hope you can understand that I didn't know how to handle this. And so therefore you are caught in the middle and that's not fair to you and I see that. With that being said, here's what I need to tell you. Um, shingles, so those of you, like shingles is a herpes virus. Um, it's not HSV, but it is herpes. Um, it's very similar. I believe that lysine is very helpful as well. I would potentially look into that and look into looking at some lysine. Um, gosh, I'm really sorry that you're dealing with that. I'm not a, I'm not a shingles expert. Do you take lysine? I do. I take lysine daily. It's a non-negotiable for me. Um, how do I prevent passing it to my ch children or my child? So if you have genital herpes down there, like your child has to come in contact with it. So, you know, like... My son isn't coming in contact with that area, so I don't worry about that. As far as oral herpes, which I do have, I have made the decision, everyone can do their own thing. I've made the decision that I will kiss my son, I will share things with my son, because I feel that that is going to be, like doing mother bonding, doing those things is more important than potentially um, accidentally transmitting herpes to him because he's going to pick it up. He, no, I don't want to say that. He could pick it up anywhere in his life. He could pick it up from school. He can pick it up from a future girlfriend. He can pick it up from, you know, picking up the wrong juice box at school. Not that he has juice, box, juice boxes, but whatever, the wrong water bottle, um, sharing a burrito with a friend in the seventh grade. I don't know, he could pick it up. So I don't want to feel like I am the leper and cannot enjoy being a mom and doing mom things. Guys, thanks for the hearts. So for a C-section, if any Albert, so, okay, so I had a vaginal delivery because I was on the, I took the antiviral the last couple weeks of my pregnancy and then I, um, did not have any outbreaks. So therefore I was able to have a vaginal delivery. My doctor and I were okay with it. Like we're in cahoots, we're on the same page. He said, okay, I will let you do this. Uh, my husband was okay with it. So there is a risk that I still could transmit herpes, but um, I was still okay with it. I was, the risk was, a, it was such a, there's other risks during delivery that were more important to me than herpes. So if you, Depends. You have to weigh your risk versus reward, and I was okay having a vaginal delivery. Dealing with the self-love. Okay, that's a big one. Um, and I was just talking about it earlier. I hope you were on the live when I was talking about self-love. One of the things we need to do is start to detach from the stigma and write out what the things are of the stigma that really get you, and then prove them wrong. And then look at your belief system and see what your beliefs are and say like, oh, that belief comes, oh, okay, I get it. That's why I feel that way. I ha I'm going really, really in depth on this um, over the next coming weeks. I'm trying to decide how to do it if I should like create a live that's just dedicated to that. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm gonna start getting really deep into this because this is where I really feel that the community needs the most help. 
So thanks for the hearts. Um, how many days, months is HSV2 virally shed? We don't know. Um, we don't know for you. That's the thing. The longer you've had the virus, the less le the less shedding you have. But we don't know for you. There's like no way to know what your body's doing, unfortunately. Thanks for answering my question. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, you had a negative IgG test 10 weeks after possible exposure. Is this accurate? It is probably accurate. If you have not shown any signs and it's been 10 weeks, you probably do not have the virus. But again, the herpes virus is tricky because it likes to hide. So your body may not have, like you, we've, okay. Before we all got herpes, we've also all been exposed to it. It's so common that you can't not be exposed to it. It's just a matter of when your body's like, oh, okay, today I want to pick it up. So like my husband, for example, does not test positive for herpes. He's never had an outbreak, so he does not have herpes. However, he is exposed to it. So could he have herpes and just not produce the antibodies? Yeah, he could be. My partner doesn't get outbreaks, why? Well, most people are actually asymptomatic and most people don't get outbreaks. That's why the virus is so common and people don't know. I take lysine. Um, how to stop Whitlow's. Same way, it's just you could take the antiviral if you want, you can take uh, supplements if you want. Thanks for the follows. What's the difference between lysine and monolaurin? So uh, monolaurin is Anjo, ugh, bleh. monolaurin is um, lauric acid that's found in human breast milk. This one is com comes from coconuts, but what it does is it it disrupts the outer outer layer of a enveloped virus. Enveloped viruses have this outer shell around them, and so it disrupts that outer shell so that I'm linking it for you guys. Here's the pan. It disrupts that outer shell so that our immune system can go in and penetrate it. So this is. For viruses, it also is very potent and helpful dealing with, with bacterial infections as well. So if you have other like infections going on, let's say you get a yeast infection and your body's fighting that yeast infection, then it gives the herpes an opportunity to pop up. So this is very really helpful on like all levels of bacterial and, and, and um, viral. Then lysine is specifically for herpes. So this specifically helps block the replication of the herpes virus. So I'm gonna pin the lysine here. This specifically blocks the replication of the herpes virus. So other things like arginine, which is also an essential amino acid that comes in and feeds the herpes virus, right? It fuels the HSV, it loves it, it's lighter fluid. So this helps block the replication of it. So that's kind of the difference and they kind of go hand in hand. They work really well together. Um, so they're all in the shop. I have it pinned for you. Do I get commissions from the supplement company? I do. I do. Yes. My makeup looks pretty. Thank you. I've been using a new face cream. So thank you for my makeup. Thanks. I appreciate that. Any natural topical relief? Yes. I'm glad you asked. This one, which is a company that I created, the Secret Society Wellness, this is the Rescue Balm. This was created specifically for down there. We have the chapstick. I have an owie, so my finger, it's hard to. Okay, so the chapstick is specifically for oral herpes, but I didn't want people to like be using, you know, like, we don't wanna do that. So this is the Rescue Balm specifically formulated for down there. It has eucalyptus, peppermint, mango butter, beeswax, lemon balm it's very very potent i love the way it smells has a nice little tingle this sells out every month because it works really well down there it's natural it helps with the pain it helps with wound healing it helps with skin repair um we also have a new product out it is the herpes fix it salve i don't have it here it is manuka honey it's frankincense oil it is very salvy you can use that really, you can use it anywhere on your body. You can use it for, even for like your crow's feet. You can use it for all sorts of things. That is also amazing. It's, it's linked for you. You can check it out. So those are the natural products. Are you friends with Inner Spark Podcast? I am not. Is there any sort of discount code for the chapstick? 
Yes, if you're a first time buyer, you do get 10% off. So if you just go to the website, it's linked for you, um, you do get 10% off. Are the outbreaks less frequent over one to two years? They are. Um, if you have HSP and have been in a relationship, how did I get it? How did I get it? And how did I, how do I tell my partner? Okay, so this happens a lot. I have people coming to me, they're like, I've been married for 10 years or five years, or I've been monogamous, or I had a woman who was married for 65 years and she's like, we've been monogamous, how did this happen? It, the herpes virus is tricky. It likes to hide, it goes dormant. So you could have picked it up at 20, gotten married at 25, and had your first outbreak at 40, because the virus can be dormant. And so if you can explain this to your partner, if you're sure that there's been you know, no infidelity and that there is, there is a monogamous relationship, if you've ever been tested for it, you've probably never been tested for HSV, you've probably never gotten like a blood test. So you don't know how long you've had it, and so this is, it lies dormant. People can have it for years before they even test positive for it. How do you, um, what's the lysine brand I prefer? I have it linked for you, you can just check it out. It's in the shop, it's pinned right here. It's uh, Palmera Natural Cure Labs. Um, how do you disclose? How do you disclose? A Couple things, if you're gonna be like DTF or just like super cash, I would just come out and disclose like, hey, I get tested um, and here's my test results. I'm negative for these things. I'm positive for this. This is what I do to help prevent transmission. I don't know if you're familiar that this is actually common. Most people have it, don't ever disclose. I'm just making sure that you know and so that we can move forward and this is what we're gonna do to help prevent transmission. Um, if it's something that's more serious, not like DTF, more, um, monogamous or more you want a relationship I'd wait till you're ready to be intimate like just wait till you're ready to see where this relationship is going like do you guys play games is it or is this person calling you back like does this person meet other criteria in your list of being in a relationship before you disclose like I was talking to someone in our secret society our our herpes support group and she was like you know I would have normally already been intimate but I realized like this person just isn't replying to my texts and he goes dark and things like that and this is not okay with me and so this is just who he is and therefore I lost interest and I never needed to disclose. So wait till you're ready to be intimate, wait till the other check marks have been marked off and then you're like, oh, I'm ready to be intimate now. Okay, here's how I disclose and just have the conversation. Lysine is an essential uh, amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the herpes body herpes virus. Can you pass it to other body parts? Unfortunately, you can. However, once you have the antibodies in your system, it's very difficult to transmit it to other parts. Meaning, if it's a brand new infection, like if you just have your first oral outbreak, let's say, like can you pass it genitally? You can, um, because there'd be no natural defense. Does, just, does herpes discharge look different? Okay, so I've heard some women say they have discharge, or some women say they don't. I don't know. Um, it could be some other infection in your body. It could be your body's natural way of like weeping. Like, you know, like when you have like a wound, there's kind of like, a, a, it's like it's weeping. Like it's naturally trying to heal itself. That could be it. So I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question for you. Ugh, what do you talk for hair loss? I've been dealing with that. Um, biotin, I would look into that. I've also been changing up my shampoo. I'm also um, gonna make some like rosemary scalp salve, which this is not a hair loss <laughs> channel, but I've been dealing with that. All right, my friends, I think I've gone through, most foods do contain arginine. And it's essential we do need arginine. So arginine helps fuel the herpes virus. Again, we need it. So you can't avoid it. That's why I like to take the lysine supplements. All right, my friends, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being here with me. It warms my heart. I know what you're going through. I understand the, the, the trauma, the upsetness, the tears, the betrayal, the embarrassment. I understand. So again, that's why I'm here. That's why I opened, open. That's why I started life with herpes. All right, I'll see you guys soon. 
Um, have a wonderful day and I'll, I'll be in touch. Oh, also I went skiing yesterday. So if you want to see my skiing vid videos on my Instagram, Alexandra Harbushka, you can check them out. All right. Bye guys.